welcome back to our book talk segment of the show. Great to welcome today. A woman has written a kind of a fun book and also a helpful book as well. It's called Directions. Really good advice for getting from here to there. We're joined today by Hallie Bateman. She's an artist and illustrator. Yeah, that's how it's pronounced, illustrator. She's a very talented woman. Uh, author of Brave New Work and a co-author of What Do I Do When I'm Gone? And she's been featured in many uh, national publications. And she joined us uh, by telephone today from, I believe, in L.A. And Hallie, good to talk with you. How are you? Hi, I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, you're in L.A. today, right? Uh, you're based out there? I am. Yeah, yeah. How, how are things in out there today? <laughs> it's a little strange, I guess, right? <laughs> like everywhere. A little, a little <laughs> A little overcast, actually, but uh, it's L.A., so it's, it's usually pretty great. That's great. Yeah, we have the same here in Florida, so always good to uh, to uh, talk to somebody from out there on the West Coast. Well, I had a chance to, to look through the book, read through the book. Very interesting, kind of a fun book, and I understand you had, uh, it's kind of interesting how you put it together. You were just kind of doing some uh, work on, uh, on, on, I guess, construction paper. Am I right about that? And putting them up on Instagram, these little sayings, the little drawings with the sayings, and, and it kind of developed into a book, didn't it? Yeah, I actually posted them really without knowing what they were or what they were going to be. I just, uh, you know, thought maybe they were a one-off. And then when they got such a response from my audience on Instagram, they kind of wound up being the most popular thing I'd ever done. I really sat up and, and paid attention and thought, okay, well, this this process by which I've been making these is clearly something I, I should keep doing. So, so that's kind of how the book was born. Yeah. And just to give the audience an idea, I mean, each page is a, uh, kind of a short little, uh, either a saying or, or something, uh, a thought. And, and, and it's kind of interesting how you do it because it shows the little colored paper that you either wrote it on and put little illustrations with as, as well. So now did you do all these in like in one time or are these over a course of, you know, a few months that you put these little things together on Instagram? Um, so it was really a few years from oh, the years. point that okay. I started sharing them to the point that the book, that the book came out. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a lot of them and then crafting them into the book was, was a process of its own, but yeah, there's, there's a, there's a construction paper theme throughout. I really love, uh, the primary color construction paper vibe. So, so that's certainly part of it. I don't think people still use construction paper. We had that in elementary school when I went, so I'm glad that people, kids uh, and adults can still use that. <laughs> yeah, they sell it in grocery stores. Right, right. I, I haven't looked in that aisle, but uh, I'll have to look for that. I remember that's what the art teacher or the teacher gave us to to make different stuff with back then. And and then the little sayings, I just turned to one right now as, as I thumb through the book. Uh, when people say this could be a book, listen to them and make it into a book. So you listen to them. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I did. How did you put it together? Obviously, you, you probably edited it down from you said it, you know did it over the course of several years and into the I guess we have about 120 of these in the book, little sayings. Mhm. Yeah. So the the process of writing it was really something where I I would set the stage for myself. So I would I would rip up paper and I would grind my ink. I have an ink stone. Um, I would, I would put on music and kind of get myself into a sort of meditative state of mind where I could start to write without doubt. You know, you know, when you start writing and you're just like, Oh, Oh, that's bad. Stop, stop, stop. Right. Like, we, we stop ourselves a lot because you're editing before you've even gotten it out. So, um, when I wrote this book, I really tried to create an environment in which I could write and do the editing later. And so, so I really tried to allow for a free flow of ideas. Kind of like a, more of a stream of consciousness thing, just kind of go and see where it takes you. Right. And then at the end, you know, throw out the ones that you don't think are any good. And and usually you're left with uh, some real gold there. Right. If you do it that way. Definitely. And, and, you know, so many of the directions in this book are more than just advice. It's kind of a conversation starter, a, a platform to just start thinking about something in a different way. I think the book can serve as so many things for, for readers. I just turned to another one. If you don't know what someone is talking about, ask. I think we're all afraid to do that at times. So good advice. That's on page four. <laughs> 
I I remember when I was a kid, I I was kind of a sheltered kid, and I didn't really know about pop music, and I didn't watch TV. So at school, I would just pretend that I watched the shows that everyone watched. Right. I had no idea what they were talking about, <laughs> and I learned through life, like, oh, you're not gonna learn about anything if you just pretend that you know everything. No, I mean, and a lot of people, we've all been through it. Uh, you hear something and. Well, you, you, you may be a little embarrassed to ask, you know, what they're talking about. But if you don't ask, then you're not going to learn. So that, that, that's a good one right there. Exactly. Treat children like human beings. I like that. But also like children. I think uh, I think we got away from that a little bit. I like that one. <laughs> I think kids sometimes grow up too fast or we make them grow up too fast. So that, that's a good advice. That's page 35. I like that one. Now, you, you did these... Uh, I guess just like with a well, magic marker, it looks like. Is that what you, like your, your tool? You had the construction paper and all different colors. And some of them you have illustrations on, one with an airplane, travel for distances to see old friends. And you got a picture of a plane. So as you thought of these, you just doodled a, a drawing too, right? I I worked on the drawings. Uh, I, I mean, when I when I started working on the book, the drawings were something that that were chosen and kind of selected to be paired with certain directions. So... Um, but yeah, in general, I do really work with images and writing at the same time, and I see them as really complementary art forms. And we won't go through all of them, obviously, but one I, I thought was uh, kind of hit me very well. You don't need a good voice to sing. I don't sing very well, but you, you like doing it in a car or, or you know, when you're we're alone listening to a regular radio or or music. So that, that's a good one there. I like that one. <laughs> yeah, I thank you. I think that there's so much of a focus on you know, our art being for consumption and being for other people. And the fact is that that's not the only purpose of art. Art is a part of being human and it has been since the beginning of time. And it doesn't have to be good for it to be good for you, for it to feel good for you to do it. Singing is a perfect example of that. It just feels good. And it's, it's easy to say that you shouldn't do it if you don't think you have the best voice, but you're holding yourself back from, the joy of how it feels to sing. Yeah. And then again, the, just for the audience not aware, these are kind of little you know, conversation starters or, you know, you can read a few at a time. It's one of those types of books. You pick it up, thumb through, and, and three or four of these sayings might hit you. And and I guess that's part of the point of it, right, Hallie, to, to get people to talk with each other about these things? Absolutely. And and for for readers to to sit with it and maybe maybe you'll see one that helps to click something for you to make make a idea like make sense to you all of a sudden maybe you've heard people say your entire life oh just be yourself be yourself and that's like the hardest thing to do like right. i think that's advice like that is sort of impossible and i have a direction that says little by little become yourself and that's kind of trying to say it's not something that happens all at once it's not an easy thing it's a little by little thing but maybe if you can remember little by little become yourself, it makes the task of being yourself a little easier. Yeah, yeah good, good advice. And uh, I know it just came out the book, but you said these sayings that you put up on Instagram got great reaction. I would imagine uh, uh, you're going to get a lot now from the book. Have you gotten any already? Yeah, but, I mean, it's interesting putting out a book that was made because it was asked for. I think there's a lot of books that no one asked for, but right. um, this is an interesting experience for me and and so gratifying that you know people are are picking it up and finding finding meaning in it name of the book is directions really good advice for getting from here to there and uh, put together uh, both uh, written and illustrated by hallie bateman our guest today and hallie do you have a website you want to direct people to to get more information on the book yeah, my website is HallieBateman.com, and you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at HalliBates. That's H-A-L-L-I-T-H-B-A-T-E-S. Great. We'll also put a link up on our website as well. But Hallie, pleasure talking to you. Good luck with the book, and hopefully we can do it again. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you so much, Doug.